Opponent builds to eight. This can only be a scold at worst. Ouch, that hurt. Opponent looks to snipe with Trevenant. And if they don't know about Golduck's ice beam coverage, they're about to find out. Welcome back to the home of Shadow Pokemon. My name is Jamie Finn. 1415, the first documented trainer in the world to reach legend only using Shadow Pokemon. If you're new to the channel, we pretty much run Spice and exclusively Shadows. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Shadow Golduck. Is it a meme pick or a dream pick? Huge shout out to one of our Discord members, a specimen unknown, who did suggest this Pokemon. If you want to join the Discord, I did link it on the community tab. But without any further ado, let's jump into the battles. And in game one, we see Weezing in the lead. The opponent realises confusion. Going to tear the opponent apart, they say switch. Into Ferrofauna, we answer with the Shadow Snowman, aka Snowbomber. The opponent builds up to a potential flash cannon. I am going to commit a shield. And this absolute savage baits me with a power whip. You hate to see it. I'm then going to throw one powder snow and the next weather ball. That's the correct fast move time in two turn versus three turn. The opponent let it go. The snowman absolutely spammy as anything gets to the second weather ball again. This could be a flash cannon. I am going to commit the final shield. The opponent full sends it at this stage. Now the snowman will be able to farm down. The opponent makes one final charge move. This is just a power whip, a bomber snow, not the bulkiest. We're easily going to shrug it off. Galarian Weezing did throw four Fairy Winds before they leave, so I go straight for the Weather Ball. And now at the energy for the Brutal Swing, it's IV dependent. If we win CMP, so I am going to try my luck. It is a CMP time, Bomber Snow does win charge move priority. This pressures the final shield off the Weezing. Brutal Swing just about going to be enough to knock us out. It's now all shields down. I send back out Golduck, the opponent sends out Lantern, and this should be G to the G. So I'm going to talk through my team building process here. Golduck obviously doesn't want to see top meta threats like Lantern, Ferrothorn, and Trevenant. So I attempted to bring Double Grass in the back that can handle all three of them threats. I think Jumpluff definitely isn't the superior Grass Flyer in this meta. I think you want to go with Tropius. If you aren't someone like myself who runs exclusively Shadows, I throw on CMP to see who wins. I'm unfamiliar with this matchup. We lose CMPs, that's valuable knowledge going forward. Golduck has the cross chop locked and loaded. This is going to take care of Lantern and probably one confusion is going to be enough to take this game. The opponent actually survived too, but Golduck wins nonetheless. Moving on to the next one. Golduck into Marwell, I throw a confusion and pivot out into a bomber snow. You can see I've thrown five powder snows as I've got a weather ball. The opponent should be at seven as confusion is four turn. They're using Vine Whip which is a two-turn move, so five plus two equals seven. The opponent baits me with a frenzy plant. You hate to see it. I'm still unsure if they're actually at seven or six, as I didn't visually see seven. However, I have been caught out in the past. I just want to maintain alignment, so I did commit a shield back out. Comes Marwell. Energy Ball does a lot of resisted damage. As the mid-game matchup was so quick, I'm not going to wait out my time. I'm going to send back in Golduck to get locked onto this switch lock Marwell. The opponent doesn't build up to a potential play rough. The switch timer does pop up and I'm going to start spamming out cross chops. When using four turn versus three turn, you actually want to throw two confusions. However, I'm just throwing one. So they're now at four bullet seeds. I just want to be able to switch out. I throw the second cross chop. That draws the final shield and I send out jump off. The opponent isn't a move spammer. However, jump off pretty tick. We can tank whatever they throw, this opponent actually on Thunder. If I was to run Ferrothorn, I'd actually run Thunder and I'd recommend Thunder because there's so many things weak to electric in this meta. We land the Acrobatics, that does huge damage. I'm still hanging on to my final shield. We're just going to save it for Golduck. The opponent throws one more Thunder. They pivot out into Marwile, looking for the Snipe. And like I said, Jumpluff, very, very tick. They can't Fire Fang. Farmer's down, we land the Energy Ball. I'm looking to switch out. I'm still switched up. The opponent does Bullet Seed Farm us all the way down. But we've hung on to that final shield. They're looking to get to their back-to-back. -back. They don't make it. And Golduck clutches up that game. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on to the next battle, we see another Marwal in the lead. This meta is full of Marwal leads and it makes sense. It's pretty good against common leads such as Trevenant, Ferrothorn and Abomasnow. Even pretty good against Weezing as the Fairy Winds essentially do nothing. The opponent say switched into a Razor Leaf Venusaur. We commit to the full Powder Snow farm down. Back out comes Marwal. I YOLO the Energy Ball. The opponent commits to Shield wanting to keep some health on this Marwal. I'm not going to make a second Energy Ball so I settle for a Weather Ball. That still does a lot of damage. Again, I don't wait out my timer. I send Golduck out as soon as possible. So if you're a lower elo player looking to climb, these are the sort of things you need to recognise. If you win switch and you hard win lead, absolutely send that Pokemon out as soon as possible. 
get it back switch lock before they're able to switch out. This opponent is running grass hole and today, unlike yesterday, I'm not losing to that nonsense. You love to see it. Moving on to the next one. Pelipper into Golduck. Our backline doesn't really fancy seeing this Pelipper. The opponent doesn't build up to a Hurricane, so I think this should be an easy tank. Uh, Golduck doesn't really tank anything particularly well. I imagine I'd win CMP, judging by how squishy I am. I don't win CMP, so I'm forced to commit a shield. I am going to throw the cross drop. I think this is a massive misplay. I don't normally bait. I imagine the squishy Pelipper would be taken out. They actually do survive. They come in two Ferrothorns. I'm going to look to chip and dip with the cross drop. The opponent lets it go. This is now prime. We can send out Jump Bluff as this is now acrobatics range. I would usually send out a Bomber Snow into Ferrothorn. However, as I'm already down a shield, the flash cannon that they are running would be threatening a huge one shot. So I'm just going to sacrifice Jump Bluff, as Jump Bluff also does not want to see that Pelipper that is still alive on pretty low HP. However, Fairy Wind does zero fast move pressure. I throw on CMP, hoping the opponent over farms. They did not. They're smarter than that. However, we are now in the one-to-one -one shield. A Bomber Snow easily going to be able to outpace this Ferrothorn to the Flash Cannon. The opponent sends back out Pelipper, hoping to catch. They don't catch. We snipe with a Confusion. I opted for that player. I didn't think two more Powder Snows. Took out the toilet. I didn't want to throw any energy and I didn't want to eat a weather ball. It turns out to be a pretty good decision. They've got their pesky tree in the back and our bomber snow about to go off the opponent. Let the weather ball go. This is only five. This is only a seed bomb. So we're going to save our shield for the ferroform. We know they're not on mirror shots. So this is game over. They're now at five bullet seeds, even if we want to go for back to back power whips. They're not going to make it. The opponent recognizes that and concede the match. Moving on to the next one. Dreadful lead. We're absolutely core broken by a Bomber Snow, especially with an energy lead. The opponent chooses to give up switch. I'll take that. Thanks, opponent. The opponent then full sends the Shadow Ball, a great shield committed on our Bomber Snow. I farm up to five. So this is now two before the Shadow Ball. They're now one away. So we're able to get off the back to back Weather Balls. A Bomber Snow going to be maintaining alignment. However, the opposing a Bomber Snow is still going to be a big problem for our back line. The opponent sends back out their own snowman. I'm going to look to chip it with a weather ball. I really hope the opponent doesn't over farm. However, the opponent's smart. They continue to over farm. So I'm going to anticipate they're going to try and throw on the CMP tie. And we catch the resisted weather ball on Golduck. This absolute mad lad is running triple grass. I'm just going to throw the ice beam as soon as I get it. You can see the fast move timing isn't fantastic, but I just want to threaten this final shield before they can potentially threaten mine with a leaf blade. The opponent does commit that final shield. I don't even bother throwing the resisted cross chop at Tropius as this banana tree is essentially a flying Umbreon. It would have done absolutely nothing. I send out Jump Bluff anticipating the opponent going to throw a leaf blade. And again, we make a huge call. It's the battle of the bulky grass flying types, the opponent, and that's four super effective. That aerial ace is a pretty trash move. I'm looking at my health. I believe I will survive this. I'm just going to spam out the move at whatever they do. If they catch, I really don't care because we've got two moves locked and loaded. One to take out the Tropius and one to take out the Abomber Snow. They do Power Snow Farmers down. Even if they've got a move, it doesn't matter. I saved my shield and we're going to win another game. Let's go. In the next battle, we see a Nightmare League, Golduck into Trevenant. You can see I'm instantly clicking Jump Bluff. You can see that because the little outer box is spamming around that. I've got no idea why your confusion registered. Thanks, Niantic. Fantastic game. We do eventually say switch into Jump Bluff. We go straight for the Acrobatics, drawing a shield off this Weezing, and I'm absolutely not bothered. If you want to overheat me, be my guest. The opponent does full send the overheat, taking us up as they've lowered their attack. I'm hoping I can Confusion farm this all the way down. Golduck, so, so glassy. You're going to see even a debuff Brutal Swing does a lot of damage. Despite us using Confusion, we're a pure water type. So these non-stab Brutal Swings are only neutral. And my God, are they doing a lot of damage. I'm still committing to the farm now. We just about make it. I'm looking top right. If that tree returns, I'm YOLO in the beam. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not. Get wrecked, trainer. They've got Quillfish in the back. I absolutely guarantee the opponent is going to master bait me. I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to shield up absolutely everything. They're going to be unable to double bait and reach a sludge wave. And I'm not a master bait. I'm going straight energy ball. As that is the correct play, it only takes me 14 quick moves, two two energy balls for them to double bait and reach a sludge wave. That's 16. Trainer, top left, it's over. You got wrecked. You're going to have to face it. 
This, again, only an Aquatel. A Bomber Snow laughs at the opponent. We're about to energy ball them to the face. It's neutral. And Golduck clutched up that mid game. Let's go. Moving on to the next battle, Golduck into Tentacle. Does the opponent know about the confusion? Clearly they do as they instantly switch into Jump Bluff. A Bomber Snow, really comfortable here. I'm just going to go straight for the Weather Ball. Looking to force some early shield pressure. The opponent does shield it up, even in the two shield trainer. You don't win this. The opponent likely going to bait me. You hate to see it, but I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to outpace to the second Weather Ball. The opponent... Opt into shield. Uh, I'm not giving you a switch. This can be an acrobatic, so I will commit my final shield. I'm then going to powder snow farm them all the way down. And when Tentacruel does return, they're going to eat a shadow energy ball to the face. The unfortunate thing here is that we are going to get poison jabbed all the way down. However, as our gold up is at full health, even if we're on sludge wave, we will tank one from full health. The opponent throws instantly. So if you're the opposing trainee, you should always throw one poison jabs. I'm always getting that confusion. The opponent's final Pokemon is Ferrothorn. I probably should have chipped it with a cross shop. However, we should be in a pretty all right spot. This absolute savage is on acid spray. How rude. However, on a more serious note, you can see there are through four fairy winds and the acrobatics. So when you're using two turn versus three turn, you want to throw at one, four or seven. And if you're the three turn versus two turn, you just want to throw on odd numbers. The opponent debuffs me again. This could now be a Thunder, but either way, I don't really care. Thunder will be returning me to my Pokeball. We've got residual energy, so I'm going to throw two Confusions. Throw the Cross Chop. Cross Chop will be taking care of Ferrothorn. And Tentacruel is about to meet its maker in our gold up. One Confusion takes them out. So in case you're wondering why I threw a couple of Confusions at the Ferrothorn, I didn't want to give the opponent a potential catch con. So I farmed up to the point where I'd always be able to outpace, even if they made a catch, moving into the next battle. Great lead, Marwal into our Shadow Gold up. The opponent say switched into Shift Tree and then they made a really strange play going for a bait. I think if you're going to be a master baiter, you need to make sure the nuke move threatens a knockout. That did not. So we shrug it off, return fire with the Weather Ball. If you want to see a Pokemon get deleted, check this out. I was at almost half health. I thought, surely I survived. Three Fire Fangs. I absolutely did not. I probably should have thrown the Weather Ball. Hashtag I'm a noob. However, we don't wait out our timer. We send back out Golduck instantly to keep this switch lock Marwal locked in for as long as possible. We make the second cross chop. The opponent commits the final shield. They bang all of that energy and pivot out into Lantern. So despite being down two shields, the opponent could have some sort of win con if they manage to farm down my jump bluff. So I'm not going to shield the first Thunderbolt. It does hit four neutral and does quite a lot of damage. Jump bluff, usually pretty tick. However... Looking at my health, two Thunderbolts with the Sparks will just about knock out. The opponent again builds up to the Thunderbolt. I am going to respect it. I'm hoping I don't get baited. The opponent full sends the Thunderbolt. I'm now going to look to farm down. Do we get there? That's six. We just about get there. We've got the moves locked and loaded and the opponent concedes. Moving on to the next one. Gold up into Tentacle. The opponent is staying in these non-stab confusions, tearing them apart. This isn't enough for a Sludge Wave, so it should be an easy tank. Skull does huge damage. They get the debuff. You hate to see it. The opponent looks to snipe with Trevenant. And if Trevenant don't know, they're about to find out. Non-stab Ice Beam. Still nearly one shots. We snipe with a Bomber Snow. Back out comes the Energy Dry Tentacruel. We're already at the Weather Ball. Weather Ball is resisted. Tentacruel barely survives. We farm down. And that is going to be all she wrote. And just like that, that investment there made Gold Up worthwhile because it was so funny. Huge shout out to the GOAT, Callum on Toast, who saw me post that short and actually powered up a Gold Up and put it to work himself. Go check his video out. As you already know, Callum, the absolute GOAT. He's basically a better version of myself. Let's not kid ourselves. He's also running a triple shadow team. He's got Shadow Gold Up in the lead with Double Dragon in the back. Really great team comp. And he actually goes on an insane nine game win streak. Moving into this final battle of the video. Our Shadow of Bomber Snow going to be chipping this tentacle. The opponent going to Poison Jab farm us all the way down. They don't build up to a Sludge Wave, so we're just going to absorb whatever they throw. It's just an Acid Spray. They now switch out into Ferrothorn, so this time I am going to throw at the correct timing. Two Confusions, which is eight turns, versus three Bullet Seas, nine turns. I only give away one free turn. We draw a Shield, and we're going to send out Jump Bluff. Let's see if they're on Flash Cannon or Thunder. 
The opponent is on flash cannon. So I always say stay in school, kids. Learn to count. You know we love counting on this channel, but we also love correct fast move timing. So again, I throw four fairy wins and the acrobatics. So two turn versus three turn. One, four, and seven. Just get that in your head. One, four, and seven. The opponent now goes for a really strange bait. Uh, thanks. So again, back to the time where we throw one fairy win and the acrobatics. This lands for massive damage. The opponent looks to snipe with Tentacruel, jump bluff, shows its bolt, we make the energy ball, get wrecked Tentacruel, switch timer will be popping up and we're going to be able to reach the cross chop to take this game. The opponent isn't at the back to back, they've just got no energy after this move, we're only one confusion away, cross chop going to be returning Ferrothorn to their Pokeball and that is going to end the battles. So it's now time to answer the question, was Golduck a mean pick or a dream pick? I'll let you decide. So today we tried to get a bit more educational. We're not just trash talking. We're also going for a bit of fast moves timing as well. So if you enjoy that, let me know down below and I look to do more of it. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing if you like your battles featured on my channel. A link to my battle submission form is down below. I'd like to say thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.